Today is Wednesday, August 9th. Time for a buoy 10 update. Today was, oh boy. Today we had the southwest wind and quite a bit of rain. And boy, it sure does make fishing difficult when you have that south wind. Your boat's just constantly crabbing. I don't know what it is about that direction, but we can handle northwest. There's places to hide from it. South wind, you're kind of committed to just putting up with it, especially if you're fishing on the Washington side. Man, it just beats you up pretty hard. But it was only around for a little bit. It started out just absolutely beautiful, nice flat calm. And I ran all the way down towards checkerboard and started fishing down there trying to find water temperature, even though I know I'm a glutton for punishment. I even said in yesterday's update, I've given up on water temperature. Well, I didn't. I chased it again and it didn't pay off and it cost me time and probably a few bites because um, they were right where I left them above the bridge on the Washington side and it was not great. It was, it was kind of interesting. I don't know. And this is where all the guide excuses come in, right? Yeah, it should have been here yesterday. We know that one and yesterday was pretty darn good. Uh, let's see, what else did I have? Oh yeah, wind shifted direction, water temperatures are different, uh, barometer has shifted. Well, now we got more cloud cover today and so different colors aren't working as well. Bring out all the guide excuses. It was, it was interesting, we had fish in the gear that just wouldn't chew and we finally hit high slack and oh, let me back up a little bit. Right before high slack, we found some that were belly in the dirt. Just because it's incoming tide doesn't mean that they're always up off the bottom suspended. We found them belly in the dirt and 30 feet of water. And I mean piles of them. You know, we go through a group of 10, 15 fish, nothing would happen. Make another lap through, we'd miss one. Then we'd finally land one. And then we'd maybe miss one. It was just one here, one there. And for the amount of fish that were there, we should have got into a really, really good snap, but it just never happened. Uh, so at high slack, I tried to just follow them up, thinking that they just keep on getting pushed up. And we found another good group of fish way, way, way up high, pretty much almost towards tongue. And uh, I found them in 20 to 30 feet of water. And because these tides are so small, all I did, the fish didn't move. So why should you? So all I did is just keep on running circles, running laps in the same little area. I just looked at my chart plotter and just kept on running circles on top of those fish. And I'd see a group of fish on my side scan or I'd see it on my active target and I'd turn around and go chase them and it paid off. Uh, we ended up getting into a handful of fish, a decent little bite. It didn't really fill up the box too much, but we had fun, it was good. Uh, only one double today, didn't land it, but heck, it was awesome. Then the south wind decided to show up and man, it was western. If you like water parks, it was quite splashy. And I called up a couple of my buddies that were below the bridge. Even though I didn't want to leave, it was just so nasty, nasty up there. It was impossible to even control the boat. I called up my buddies and oddly enough, down below the bridge was calmer than it was above the bridge. Just the way it was being funneled through, who knows. But yeah, I wanted nothing to do with that anymore. So I got out of there and we headed down river and just dropped in. I really didn't even care to look at water temperature, what was on my graph, anything. I found a spot that was calm and that I could manage at least trolling and just dumped in towards uh, the bottom of the sands near checkerboard and just started fishing. And all of a sudden the tide slowed up, fish started biting randomly. It was just the right part of the tide and it was epic. It was just a fantastic bite. I was finally in the right place at the right time and it was, you just get in one of those grooves where you know you can do no wrong. And it was, I don't know how many fish we landed. I know that we got all of our kings. It was, it's what buoy 10 is always talked about being. It's what we all dream about seeing here at buoy 10. It's just one of those crazy bites. And everybody was catching fish. It didn't matter what color. Uh, Bronco got one or two. Mexican hound was doing really well, but I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, I caught him on blue tip rainbow. I caught him on red and white. Again, it didn't matter. But we did have one rod that for about an hour got, I think it was like six straight, no other rod was getting touched. And so I immediately took that rod aside and started measuring. I got a little on my C deck stuff that I had installed last year. I'll show you. I had a measuring tape put in. I had that measuring tape put in on my C deck so I could quickly do measurements, not only for fish, but also for gear like this, especially this pro troll fishery. And so I 
took a look at it and that one rod had the exact same leader length as every other rod. I was fishing 28 to 32 inch leaders today. But that one rod had an 18 inch bumper, super short, super short. And it's like, man, is that really what, what's causing these fish to bite is that super short bumper? Well, it kept on getting bit. And the guys at the boat were like, hey, let's shorten them all up, shorten them all up. It's definitely working, it's definitely not hurting, let's shorten them up. And the reason why I'm running different bumper lengths, I have 18s, 22s, 24s, 26s all around the boat, is because right after that I said, we're gonna hold off because these fish and the currents change and you just don't know what rod's gonna light up next. That rod with the 18 inch bumper that just got like six in a row, went ice cold, didn't get another bite, all the other rods started lighting up. So, just as soon as you think you got it figured out, you're wrong. You hear me say that a lot and it is because it is 100% true. So, what did I learn from today? I don't know. Right place, right time, right fish. <laughs> we landed on them just by sheer dumb luck and it was a blast. These fish are not moving too much, um, especially in these smaller tides. I heard a fish caught from Tongue Point all the way down to the ocean. So there are just fish everywhere in this system right now and it won't be long until they're headed up river so the way that this typically works we're going to see what happens this year but as the ties get smaller and bottom out for the smallest set the fish will start to stage up a little bit higher in the system bridge on up and then as the tides grow when they grow it pushes that group of fish on up river towards rainier and longview and st helens so for you folks that fish up in that area you should see a good shot of fish here probably in about mm, a week 10 days about that time frame because there are a lot of them here. So that should increase that uh, catch rate up there in those areas. So we'll see if that actually happens this year. I got a hunch it might happen a little bit earlier, a couple days earlier, just because of how warm the water temps are and the water temps that we're seeing out in the ocean already. So I think these fish are staging up out in the ocean even. Um, I know the guys that went out today, it was wet and wild. It was nasty out there, but they did find fish. So they're here. They're here right now. But what always happens every single year is we hit a point in the middle of the month where fishing gets really tough. And it's just because we start getting those growing tides again and there's not many coho around. So we're just waiting for those falling tides and the Chinook to stage up one more time. So hopefully that doesn't happen this year. Hopefully it's just great the entire time, but we'll see. Um, I've been getting asked a lot about how to figure out where to start um, for the times that you guys are coming down to fish yourself. And the best advice I can give is to look at the tides for the date that you're coming down. And when you look at those tides, look at that for the past several years. And we have about eight, 10 years now of these updates. So figure out the exact same tide set, whether it's rising or falling tides. And the uh, tide set itself is a three footer, five footer, seven footer, so on and so forth. Once you figure that out, look at those exact same tides over the last several years pull up those updates and that will give you a really great idea as to where to start it this is an index of fishing down here in buoy 10 these updates and it's it's a history it's a catalog it's a diary and it will help you out i guarantee it because i use it myself because it's a good way for me to remember where i started where i fished and what i did so with that i need to park the boat we'll see you guys tomorrow and hopefully this helps good luck out there on the water go get them